Hi, my name is Craig. I'm the technical manager here at Keynep UK. And today I wanted to cover off uh, one of our mobile applications that we've got. This is our application called Q Manager. Now, this is free. Um, I will be demoing the version available on iOS, uh, but it looks very similar over on um, Android, which you can get for free from the uh, Google Play Store as well. Um, so firstly, let's open up the application and it will do a quick face ID. So I've set that up so that it will only let me open this application um, if it's got uh, a passcode or the face ID on the iPhone. Um, so here we can see all the different devices that I've got already added in. Um, so it's not just for NAS, it's for a lot of the different QNAP devices as well, such as our Guardian devices, the, uh, the, the Edge Switch devices, which is a, a NAS and a switch built in together, as well as our routers. So I've got there the, uh, the Q Horror Craig, which is our Q Horror 301W, uh, the Wi Fi 6 uh, router that we've got. Um, so all the different options here. Um, the one I'm going to demo today is the one at the top, the TVS-H1288X. Um, when you first open this, you will have to add a NAS. So down at the bottom, there is a button called Add NAS. Now, when you do that, it will go off and search your network for any NAS that it can find on the network or any other devices. And it's going to let you tap on those to add them. So if I was to tap on the option at the top, so we'll do that. It pre-populates the IP address that it discovered and the username of admin, um, but it will need you to type in the rest of the information, such as the password. And there are some advanced setting options down at the bottom there, so you can go and add in um, anything else like SSL or different ports that you may have. So you've got a lot of different options to put in there. Um, so we'll go back. I don't need to add another now. So I'll just click straight onto the TVS H1288X there at the top. Now, when we get in there, we're going to see a summary of the NAS. So we can see information like the system health, uh, how long it's been turned on, hard drive health. I've only got a couple of M.2 SSDs in this one at the moment. And you've also got different options down below for the uh, resource monitor. So you can see currently how much CPU and RAM is used at a glance. And you've got your adapters there. And the adapters can actually swipe across. So you can swipe through to the different adapters to find the different status of them. I've only got the one connected at the moment. So it's showing a little bit of um, uh, traffic there. Um, as we scroll down as well, we can now see the status of the storage. Now, as this is a QUTS hero based NAS, uh, we can go through and see different things on the different shares that we've got created. So each share can have a different um, capacity, so you can scroll through those. There's also the three little lines there just to the right of the, where it says storage. Tapping that will switch it between the shared folders and the storage pool. So if we tap that, we can now get a, a status of the overall storage pool. And if you had more than one storage pool, you'd be able to swipe between the different ones there as well. As we scroll down, we get a hardware overview, just some temperatures, how quick the fans are spinning, that sort of thing. Um, but all the extra options are all going to be in the three lines at the top left. So if I tap that, it will pull up a menu. So here we can see more in-depth details of those summaries that we've had. So we'll start from the top and work our way down. Um, the first one being resource monitor. So this is going to give you much more detail on the status of the NAS. So uh, if your internet connect, if your network connection is up and what the IP address is, you can scroll through and see all the individual information about all the drives that you have. As you scroll down further, you get a picture of what the fans are looking like within the unit as well. And that's also scrollable. So you can scroll between uh, the uh, the different fans that you've got if you've got more than more than one in there. Um, at the bottom, we do have another subset menu, so you can dive straight in instead of just looking at the system. You can go through and look at the CPU load. So this unit does have 12 cores on the uh, CPU, so we can scroll through all those different CPU cores. Uh, the NAS isn't doing much right now, so everything's showing 0%. We can check the RAM out as well. Uh, so this is going to show you um, how much RAM you've currently used, how much of it's in the swap file um, or physical memory. You've got your information on your storage there as well, and you can drill that down into much more detail there if you, if you need to get some more detail on it. And we can also scroll along the bottom there to go check out things like the bandwidth, what the uh, bandwidth throughput is of the unit. Um, processes, this is just letting you know, a bit like Task Manager on Windows, or activity monitor on a Mac, it's going to show you what application or service within the NAS is using which resource at this moment. Um, and the user tab is going to show you who's currently connected in. So I'm connected in from two places. The top option is from my laptop. Uh, the bottom option here is from the phone. So it's showing you those bits of information. And you can tap in, and it gives you a basic bit of information about each one if the uh, device is offering it as well. So we can go back. 
and we can tap the three lines again and now we'll go down to the next option which is background tasks so if you do have a background task running on the QNAP uh, such as copying a file from one place to another place um, extracting a zip file um, transcodes things like that they would show up here and uh, you can check the status of those and uh, see when they're going to be completed if we go down to privilege settings, this is going to show you different users, user groups, shared folders, and you can attach um, uh, different settings to each of these as well. It's not just an information display. Uh, so, for example, if I wanted my colleague Tam to have a, uh, a different um, setting there, I can tap on the Tam option and I get some options to change his password and edit the account profile or do permissions, which is probably the most likely thing that you'll do. So if we check out the uh, the permissions, he's only got read-only access to the public folder. I could change it to read-write. Um, if I wanted him to have access to the, the backup folder, I can change that as well. Um, so it's very easy to do these changes, and you just apply those at the top. It will go off and process these changes and uh, apply those so that he can now use the different permissions. Uh, user groups at the bottom, you can edit who's a member of the different user groups. And you've also got the shared folders option as well. So shared folders is you can go into each individual shared folder and give somebody access on a different um, file folder. You can check the size, the status, some different information there as well. A system service, this allows you to enable or disable some services that are running on the NAS. Um, so for example, if I wanted to enable the uh, SSH connection, I can just go down there and tap that. It will go off and set that and it will change it for everybody so that now everybody can use the SSH connection if they so wish as well. Um, so very useful for quickly just enabling a service if you need it just for a, a small amount of time. You can just do that straight from your phone without having to log into the, uh, the NAS web interface for some of the more popular services. Um, the App Center allows you to look at the apps that you've got installed and you can also install some new apps as well. So uh, currently we've got the My Apps that I've got installed, but if we go across to the All Apps, it's going to show you the uh, the whole App Center that's there. So if we scroll down, let's say we wanted to install the JS Tetris option there, I can just say tap install that and it's going to go off and install that and I can see the pop up on my laptop as well. It's actually saying now that there's a, a background task of it installing. Uh, JS Tetris there in the background so maybe we can see that in the background task no it's already installed so it's not going to show it it just installed too fast and um, so if we go down to system logs and system logs we can see there that the the uh, system logs of the device and everything that we've done so we can see the things we've already done in the session there uh, enabling the SSH service editing the permissions of the user TAM as well as installing the uh, the Tetris application and you can uh, tune into these as well in different ways instead of looking at all maybe you want to see just the errors or warnings that have happened so there's a few warnings that I had already which have already sorted out but that's showing you the different information about the different warnings that you have on the NAS uh, if I go through to hybrid backup sync, this is going to allow me to look at the backup jobs that my QNAP is managing. So these are both jobs that it's sending out to other devices, as well as any incoming jobs that are there as well. And um, so with the my jobs, these are the ones that are created on this device. I've got a bit of control. So if I tap it, I can actually start the backup job if I want to as well. And um, so that's going to run the backup job between the other NAS. So we can see they're running 0%. Um, it's already completed, so it should finish pretty fast. Um, but that's just a, a, a level of control you can have maybe you've got some backup jobs that you did not assign a schedule to uh, this would allow you to go through and uh, manually start the backup jobs when suits a really good option if you're using backup jobs to something like a USB hard drive that may be connected and you only want to run those when you know you've plugged the USB drive in so you could plug the USB drive in uh, come into the app here and you'd be able to then um, run the backup job so we can see that that backup job was a success if we go down to download station, um, you obviously do need download station installed on your NAS to use this part of Queue Manager. Um, so here we get an overview summary of um, uh, what we've got downloaded. So you can tap the little right arrow there and it will pull you into the extra section of anything that is currently downloading, any completed torrents that you've got or downloads or file uh, options that you've added in. So we can see there that I downloaded the Ubuntu 20.10 option there, 2.74 gigs, and it's already seeded back to the full 100%. And I get a bit of control here, so I can delete that if I want to. And you can see which ones are active or inactive as well along the top. Um, another really cool feature is there is a search function. Um, so if there's something you're looking for, you can remotely tell your NAS to go download it. So even though you're on a mobile connection, um, you can tell your NAS to go download something. So let's say I went into the search box here and I typed that I wanted some QNAP firmware, for example. So let's just type that. 
and click search, it will go off and search for any tyrants that have QNAP firmware. Um, I generally don't recommend you get your QNAP firmware this way. It's just a, an example that comes up with some uh, clean results of things that you can do. And if you ever wanted to download anything, you can just simply tap the download button. So I'm going to download the third one down there. So if I just tap that download, it asks what you want to do with it. Where is it going to put it? So you can click the create the task and click done and it will go off and download that file to your NAS. Um, so that's the uh, download station option. You get a nice status there at the bottom of the current bandwidth that will be used by, uh, by that task as well. Um, so in system tools is the next option. So if you had any external USB devices connected like a USB hard drive or a USB printer, you'd see those here in this list as well. It gives you a bit of control over the over them if they're connected. Uh, you get your allow deny list. Uh, so maybe one of your users has uh, tried too many connections at once with a failed password. Uh, you could come in here and uh, re-allow them access if they were in the denied list, for example, or you can even change the options from allowing all connections to uh, deny connections from the list or allow connections from the list only as well. Um, the one I use the most is probably the system option on the right. So over here, you get options to locate this device, which will make your NAS uh, flash in the uh, the, the little beeper inside make noise as well. Uh, you can restart your NAS, uh, shut down the NAS, or even check for firmware updates. So I'll make the NAS go off and check for firmware. Um, the firmware is already up to date, so there's nothing we can do there. But you can perform firmware updates on your NAS uh, from your mobile phone as well. Uh, so one of the last settings here is in Notification Center. So here you can choose to have push notifications delivered right to this app uh, from your NAS. So we can see here I've got one paired device, which is this phone. So I can see that there and I can stop that pairing here if I want to. Um, and I've also created some system notification rules. So you have to create the notification rules uh, through the web interface, uh, but this gives you a summary of those and you can enable and disable them. So if you click into them, you can see what I'm getting notified from pretty much everything that's um, on the NAS. So any setting that I change, I'll get a push notification of it. Um, and I've also got um, uh, alert notifications. So if anything was to happen on the NAS that's a warning or an error, um, I'm going to get a notification straight push to my phone. And you can configure different ways of doing that. You can even have Skype alerts sent to you via instant messaging from our uh, little bot that we have on Skype. Um, you can also uh, have email alerts set up if you'd rather do that instead of push notifications as well. Um, so the very last thing is uh, right at the bottom, we do have options for settings. So this just allows you to sign into your QNAP ID, which just links all your devices together. Um, and whether or not you want to do auto login of a device um, or passcode locks with, with things like face ID or fingerprint sensors, if your phone supports those as well. Um, and right at the very bottom, we do have an option for contacting support. So contacting support would give you an option uh, where it would pre-fill out some information for a support ticket with us. So it will put things like uh, the NAS information, uh, the firmware version it's running, um, some default apps that are installed. You can edit it if you want to, but there is an option right at the bottom there uh, that if you want to contact support for this specific device as well. Okay, so hopefully that was useful um, and you were able to see some extra things that you can do with the free mobile apps that we have. Um, we'll do another video a bit later on about our Q file application as well, so um, come back for more on that one as well. Um, so that's everything I wanted to cover here with the uh, the, uh, the Q Manager application. So a really useful tool for managing um, and uh, configuring some features on your QNAP. Um, obviously, you can't do everything that you can do in the web interface, but it's a really good option if you're if you're on the go and you need to make a quick setting change. Um, it's a really good option for you. Okay, thanks a lot for watching.